Greetings, YouTubers. I'm Rick, the tech enthusiast here with the next L2 lesson number 29, DC motors. In this lesson, we'll check out the Elgu Kits DC motor and controlling it using the L293 IC, which is a quadruple half H bridge driver and powering the whole thing using a breadboard power supply module. So let's start building. I briefly discussed the breadboard power supply module in the 32-bit shift register lesson. The breadboard power supply's purpose is to provide power to our current hungry circuits and avoid overloading the Arduino Uno. It's powered by the 6.5 to 9 volt DC 2.1 millimeter plug and has a maximum 700 milliamps of output current rating. Some of the other features of the breadboard power supply module are that it has an on and off switch, a LED power indicator, switchable DC rail output, USB power, and output power header pins for external use. Breadboard pins connect directly to the power rails. Just note the polarity. Positive is recommended to go to the red power rail and negative to the blue. They can be independently switched to 3.3 volts or 5 volts or off. Also note that the USB connector can only supply power to an external device and cannot be used to power the breadboard power supply. The L293D quad half H bridge driver IC is typically used to control up to two DC motors in either direction or a single two phase motor. The D in the part number indicates that this particular part has the inductive transient suppression clamping diodes and they are already incorporated into the IC. Nice. Half H bridge drivers, drivers input one and two, work as a set to control a single motor spin direction. Driver inputs three and four work as a set to control a second motor. Each input set are controlled by a common enabled pin, enabled one, two, or enabled three and four. Speed can be controlled by varying the length of time that the enable pin is set to high. An Arduino pin with pulse width modulation, or PWM, is used for this purpose. We can identify the Arduino PWM pins by the little tilde next to the pin number on the Arduino board. The DC motor is 4.5 volts to 9 volts, 130 sized DC toy motor with a maximum load current of 250 milliamps. We need to be careful with the soldered leads. They're delicate and can easily break off. The data sheets in the tutorial have additional information on the breadboard power supply module the L293D IC and the DC motor, and I encourage you to check them out. For this lesson, we'll need the following items from your kit. The Elgo Uno R3 board, the L293D IC, the DC motor and fan blade, two 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitors, the breadboard power supply module, the 9 volt DC wall adapter, the breadboard, and several male to male jumper wires. On page 197, you will see the following schematic. And here's my version the L293D's enabled 1 2 pin is connected to D5. Driver input 1A is connected to D4. Driver input 2A is connected to D3. The outputs Y1 and Y2 are connected to the DC motor. VCC2 is connected to 5 volts, as is the VCC1 pin. Note, the VCC1 powers the internal logic and VCC2 powers the motors. VCC2 could be connected to a power source from 4.5 volts up to 36 volts. And I'd recommend grounding the L293 D pins 4, 5, 12, and 13. And the data sheet recommends that a 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor is added to VCC1 and a 1 microfarad ceramic capacitor is added to VCC2. On page 198, you will see the wiring diagram with a photo on page 200. And here's my wiring diagram. I've added the additional ground connections and capacitors. 
Unfortunately, the largest ceramic capacitor provided in the kit is a 0.1 microfarads. So we'll just have to make do with that. Okay, let's jump to the code. As in the previous lessons, we'll load the recommended sketch provided in the tutorial. Go to the file menu item, select open, and browse to where you saved your Elgu files. Then under the language, code, under lesson 29 DC motors, DC motor, and open the DC underscore motor dot INO file. Looking at the code, you see it starts by defining the enable DIRA, which I assumed is an abbreviation for direction A and direction B, followed by a global variable I as an integer. The void setup sets the pin modes for the enable direction A and direction B pins to output. Then it starts the serial monitor. Simple enough. The void loop has basically three parts. The first part spins the motor one way, then the other, using a for loop. It repeats this five times and then it stops. The second part spins the motor one way and performs a slow stop. Then it spins the motor the other way and performs a fast stop. The third part spins the motor one way at full speed, then it uses several lines of analog write function calls to send the pulse width modulation or PWM to the enable pin, each time reducing the PWM value until it's down to 50, slowing the motor. Then it increases the PWM back up to 255, which is the maximum value. The enable is set low, which turns off the motor, and then it repeats. Let's upload the code and try it out. Okay, this goes one way and then the reverse five times. And then it's a, the fast, slow sample. And then this is the pulse width pulled and slow again. So it's going through the pulse width modulation to slow it down. And then it speed and spins back up again. You can just hear the audible noise. And it stops for about 10 seconds and then it repeats. There we go. Now, here I have this set up with the DC motor. And it's kind of propped up with this little little uh, breadboard I have here. I use this kind of a, this blue stick, little uh, poster adhesive. To, it's, a, it's a little putty that you can just use to uh, uh, easily remove posters from the wall. I just have that to prop up the DC motor and the fan. Otherwise, it run on, rub on the uh, the desk there. Here we have the Elgo Uno. We have the L293D IC. I have the two capacitors on either side, and we have the one ground going to. The breadboard for the Arduino Uno, which is connected and powered by the USB port. And then we have the DC plug-in adapter, 2.1 millimeter plug-in to the breadboard power supply. Whoop. Uh, one of the, there we go. Eh, it's not perfect, but it kind of works. Okay, that seemed to work well. However, you may have noticed that it takes three lines of code to control the motor. We need to set the L293D driver input one pin, then the driver input two pin, and then the enable one two pin. The enable one two pin can be high, low, or some PWM value from zero to 255. Driver one A and driver two A can be either high or low. So I came up with this revised sketch that might help. The sketch begins like before by setting the L293D enable one two, driver one A and driver two A pins. 
I chose these names because it matches the data sheet and I thought it would make more sense. This time, there are no global variables or global adjustable variables, so onto the void setup. The void setup, like before, sets the pin modes and starts the serial monitor. Simple. This time, I added a function, void motor control. The motor control function requires three parameters, the speed as a byte, and two booleans, D1A and D2A, which you might have guessed, sets the enable 1-2 pin PWM value, driver 1A and driver 2A values. Enable 1-2 can be high, low, or a value between 0 and 255. If we use 255 as the maximum value, a byte fits the bill perfectly. The driver values of high and low are essentially Boolean values. Now by sending this function three parameters, we can reduce the many lines of code from the previous sketch. Now down to the void loop. I wanted to kind of replicate what was done in the previous sketch, but use a new motor control function to simplify the code. Like before, it's broken into three parts. The first part is used for the for loop to spin the motor one way and then the other five times. Notice that I declared the integer i in the for statement. That way we can avoid declaring a global variable. After it stops, it's followed by a short delay. The second part spins one way and slows to a stop. Then it spins the other way and performs a fast stop. The third part uses a for loop to step down the PWM using the variable x, which is reduced by 25 each time it goes through the loop, followed by a small delay. So the motor control speed starts with 255 and is later reduced to 50. Thus, the motor will spin at full speed at the beginning and then slow down. With a loop, I only need to add two additional lines of code to make this happen after which the motor is stopped. And then it proceeds to another for loop that starts slow and ramps up to full speed. It stops again, and after a small delay, it repeats. Let's upload the code and check it out. Okay, as you can see now, like before, it goes one way and then reverse five times. And does the fast slow example like before. Then it does the pulse width modulation fold and slow. And you can hear the audio noise. And then it slowly begins to go up back up again. And stops and then waits 10 seconds and repeats. Pretty simple. I think it works pretty well. Well, that's it for this lesson. I hope you've enjoyed learning a little about the DC motor, the L293D quad half H bridge driver IC, and the breadboard power supply. If you like this sketch, be sure to let me know in the comments section below. I'll have additional links for other interesting videos and code for this project in the show notes below. Join me next time for lesson 30, Relay. And if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get notified when I upload new videos. Thanks and see you next time.